All right. Uh, I think, uh, well, I mean, we've, we've made it this far, Jean. Uh, it, Look how, at long, us go. <laughs> how long have we, have we been uh, in touch about this? It's been, I think, January I feel 20. Like, like two years, year and some change. Yeah, like January yeah, 2020 years. is, I think, first time I ended up at Burn Club. So, I mean, it's almost January 2022. So it's been close to two years now. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I just remember showing up at Burn Club and uh, meeting you and Kenton. I remember that visual of uh, being on that basketball court and I saw two dudes wearing a black leather jacket and dancing with nunchucks on fire. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, what is going on here? And there's some music playing on. And so it immediately like made me very fascinated about, oh, you can actually put fire on nunchucks. And <laughs> fire on that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think that's, that's how I remember you. Uh, I, that's how I remember the first time meeting you. And, and, you know, obviously like I got really fascinated and I requested Kenton to get me a pair of fire nunchucks and, and the rest is history. Like, I think even fire has, has made a huge difference in my life as well. So I mean, part of our conversation today is going to be about, about that. And so I'm, 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 I hope you're looking forward to, to talking about fire again. I mean, yeah, fire. <laughs> fire away. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, I mean, obviously, you know, just, I guess, before we get into uh, some of your dreams and aspirations and your artist journey, uh, I kind of want to just uh, take a moment very quickly to, first of all, thank you to support our film project. Uh, I think you've been definitely one of those guys who've just been just so easy to work with. And I want to take this moment to highlight this. And, and, and because of that, I, I love you for, for just <laughs> the positivity and, and just the ease of execution that you bring to this team. Well, that's awesome. I feel like I have done literally nothing. So, <laughs> hooray, you guys have been working like day in, day out on this. So like, I'm happy to be a part of it. Well, that, thank you very much. I mean, I mean, that's, that's one of the things that makes uh, independent filmmaking, especially documentary filmmaking uh, mm. easy is that, you know, if people can align on a vision and just see value in that story getting out. And, and so like, I am, definitely very keen to keep partnering with artists like yourself who sort of, you know, uh, uh, you know, understand what we're trying to do here at a, at a bigger picture. And, and then just, just, you know, uh, as and when opportunities come, you know, come and contribute as, as much as, as it's practical and feasible. So like today, for example, doing this interview, uh, I've, I've, I've definitely like gone through a bit of a roller coaster, uh, trying to just figure out how to get it to a point where we're doing this uh, this crowdfunding campaign. So yeah, you know, greatly appreciate you sharing our post. Greatly appreciate you encouraging uh, and teaching us how Instagram works and posting things in collaboration. You know, every little bit helps. Yeah, of course, of course. Okay, well, with that being said, uh, you know, Jean is a a uh, fascinating ma martial artist and a fire martial flow artist, a fitness instructor, and a lot of other things. And I feel like every day, I'm sure you're learning new things about yourself and your art. And, and so I guess as a start, as a starting point, I'm, I, I'm sure people are very keen to just learn about how you got into this very niche art form of fire flow. And, and it, just this idea of you know, being a fire performer and, and having, finding a career path through performance art uh, like Fireflow is very fascinating. So if you could tell people a little bit about what is the fascination here? Uh, how, why do you love it so much? And how did you, how did your journey start with fire? Yeah, um, I grew up doing martial arts my whole life. Um, but a few years ago, I felt pretty lost in it. And I was trying a new form of movement every month I'm, when I moved down to San Diego. So I was trying like yoga and capoeira and a bunch of other things each month. And then I think 
probably month four or five hit, I was walking around um, Ocean Beach in San Diego. And I walked on to um, a grassy area where there were like acrobats and people doing handstands. And then at nighttime, they did fire there. Um, and one of my friends tried to hand me the staff and say, go spin this. And I was like, no, no way. There's a huge crowd here. I've never touched that on fire before. I'm not doing it. And then I went into the circle and I did it and my whole life changed forever. It just turned into like, okay, I do this every Wednesday. And then it turned into, um, hey, you wanna meet up and do fire with friends and stuff. So then it turned like Wednesday, Thursday, and then more and more days of the week, and then and then COVID hit, right? So when that happened, um, everything got shut down and everything closed, but I really had this fire thing, and I went um, underground in the tunnels with a couple people at a time, and we would spin fire down there. Um, and then there were some nights we were out past the curfew, and we'd have to light up and wait for the helicopter to go by and then light up again. <laughs> um, yeah. And then, I mean, after a year of just really, really doing nothing but spinning fire, mm -hmm. um, people wanted to pay me for it. <laughs> I was like, yeah. yeah, that's amazing. Let's go. <laughs> so you're also teaching people uh, martial fire flow. I suppose you probably start without fire and then they sort of get fascinated with the fire aspect to it and just light their own props on Usually fire. Usually they get fascinated with the fire first. Okay. They're okay. like, oh my God, I want to do that. And I'm like, okay, cool. Um, everyone, right? Like, so sometimes people don't want to do it unless they're going to light it on fire on the first day. Um, sometimes I've done some where I've done like eight classes with someone and they still don't want to that. The, then, so it's like all over the spectrum. They just more like the movement part. Um, yeah. They, it's, they, they just like the movement part. So tell me a bit, a bit more about, you know, I think for people tuning in, you know, well, movement arts and why, why I guess, you know, uh, I guess, you know, people just gravitate towards movement arts as opposed to like other forms of arts, I guess. I guess it would be something that I would be curious to discuss today. Yeah? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's either or. Mm -hmm. I think um, I do movement arts because when I move, I feel good, mm -hmm. right? It like is a huge release for me. Um, when I try to draw, I hit frustration. Okay. Um, I'm not able to do it. I'm not able to sit at a computer for hours on end to edit things. Um, I can sit on my iPhone and edit, you know, 15, 20 second clips by just slapping a song over that a talented videographer friend of mine took a video of. Mm -hmm. um, but so that kind of art form is harder for me. Uh, movement wise, I can look at something and be like, okay, I could get that in like three tries. Nice. Um, yeah. Or like, oh, okay, that's a move that I, it takes like 10 minutes to learn. Um, or that's a move that's definitely going to take me like six months. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and uh, I guess, you know, one of the, one of the things that always stands out about martial fire flow is that it's fire. So it's, it's almost like a act of uh, defiance or it's a bit of a rebellious form of art form. What are your thoughts on that in particular? I think that we need to start rebranding fire. Okay. I think um, fire is dangerous and rebellious and um, seemingly uncontrollable, but fire is also like powerful, right? Um, which is a better word than dangerous. It depends on how you use it. Fire is very cleansing. 
um, fire, fire is like a force to help push you. Um, that said, I do understand that that it like burns people's houses down. <laughs> so, <laughs> has that ever happened at one of your performances that someone got out of control and and uh, things went uh, wry and something got burned? <laughs> no. Okay, that's <laughs> um, great. I did one time, like a couple years ago. One time, I hit a tree. Mm-hmm. Uh, with my rope dart. It was in a much smaller area than I was used to. Mm -hmm. But then I just walked over to the tree and I grabbed the leaf that was on fire and everything was fine. Okay. No no Californian fires caused due to John's rope. No, no. There's a lot of safety measures when you spin fire. You have people on standby with Mm duvetines and some fire extinguishers as well. Okay. And and so... I think a big part of it is just, you know, the the community support. Uh, you know, I, when I was in Los Angeles and San Diego, uh, spending time with uh, Marshall Fireflow artists, you know, they, they really seemed like a very close knit unit. Uh, everybody was sort of chasing after their creative potential through this, you know, art form and expressing themselves through this art form. Uh, are you addicted to the community now? The community is, the community honestly is what um, keeps me going and makes everything like this possible. I am a, like, I hang out in another community that has fire, but fire is not the main focus. Mm -hmm. Um, And in that community, if you want to try something, everyone is so supportive, Mm -hmm. like automatically right away i was at a dinner last night it is around thanksgiving time and it was a friend's birthday yeah um i was at a dinner last night and there must have been like 20 people there and around every person was like community that's what we're thankful for and we're excited for the next year to see how the community will grow um i love indoctrinating people into the community by handing them something on fire. And then like, that's all you have to do. You just ha- have to hand someone uh, something on fire that like looks like they have an interest yeah. and then bam, they're obsessed like I was. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah if you if you can get someone yeah. a fire prop in their hands. You right? too, yeah. yeah. How yes. did it feel the first time that you spun fire? Uh, the first time I spun fire was uh, at, uh, desert rave in uh, Mojave, California. And it was like a very thin staff. And, mm-hmm. and one of my friends, he was really into Umez, you know, Umez, he was into it. So he yeah. handed me a staff. And it was the first time I spun it and I wasn't really like great or anything at it, but I felt good how the fire sounded around my ears when I was moving it, right? And so immediately the idea struck that, you know, if, if I could get really good at it, this could be really fun because of just how you get engulfed in the fire and and that was what was 100 percent, yeah yeah and so you know when yeah. i started doing yeah. nunchucks uh the first time uh you know the the l strike move when you do the the l strikes right that's when you're really like engulfed in the fire and so like that's my favorite moment it may not look like the most exciting or fascinating move but what what you feel with the sound of the it fire have to. yeah doesn't have to, yeah. And actually, with nunchucks, that's the move I do the most. The air strikes, yeah, I love the yeah. air strikes, yeah. Because because <laughs> you're completely wrapped around in the fire, and especially on your first time lighting. Because I've seen like, yeah, I've seen easily hundreds of people mm-hmm. light fire for the first time now over the last couple of years, and every time it's like the fear builds. Mm-hmm. and um and then they don't know what to do and they're really nervous and then the fire lights or or gets passed to them and then you see the the small like little paralyzing part um where their mind is fighting like the fear of this thing that they've been taught to to not go near the whole time and then you see them overcome that um and then start to be able to move and like you said get engulfed by the flames and it's like my favorite thing to see 
Yeah, and like, you know, lately I've been a bit fascinated about the patterns that it creates. So my, my buddy, Vikram, who's also the DP on this project, we've been experimenting with the frame rates of the camera and trying to see what kind of like patterns we can create uh, with the nice. camera and the fire flow. And, you know, we, we talked a little bit about sacred geometry and how, you know, when you're flowing, uh, you know, the fire creates patterns that, that sort of like make sense or are symmetric. And, and I mean, I'm sure there's like more to it than what I know right now, but I've seen some crazy pictures of, you guys flowing and sometimes there's a dragon in the flame and sometimes there's like crazy ah. like uh i don't know like here it's what, flying what, around yeah it's like what are the, what are those called tritonic solids or like you know the the metatron's cube and uh th those sort of symbols appearing in fire uh, uh with some with some uh, expert photography that's as it sounds very fascinating did you me. did you did you hear the uh the change in volume when you said metatron's cube just now i did not why oh uh, maybe that was just on my my yeah. end then. okay but it was, was... like the, the the metatron's cube yeah and then and then it went back to higher and i was like oh yeah that's cool i hope that got picked up otherwise <laughs> i'm just crazy oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh man you're definitely a bit crazy uh, anyone who plays with fire, I think, is certified crazy to some extent. <laughs> crazy in a good All way. All the best people. Uh, I, I believe so, too. Yeah. So let's let's talk about, you know, uh, I mean, obviously, a lot has happened in the past two years. And uh, this campaign, we're calling it the Express, Express Yourself campaign. And the whole idea is that, you know, we give ourselves a chance to honestly express ourselves and also take a moment to just think about this reality where we had no fear, like no fear of not having a paycheck or no fear of losing friends or family because of our honest self-expression or just, just no fear of judgment and no fear of failure. If we, for a moment, put you in that state of mind, uh, what dream would you want to turn into reality? I feel like, um, I would be doing exactly what I'm doing right now. Um, uh, right now, honestly, the paychecks are rough, right? It's, it puts strain on everything and it is super scary to try and be a performer full time and like try to get on some sort of TV shows and try and yeah, fulfill life as a performer. Right. Like that's a big dream. It's a big goal. It's a one that a lot of people from all around the world have. Um, and it that that kind of fear stops a lot of people from pursuing it. So I think facing that fear, acknowledging it, right? Because like, oh man, if I don't get these gigs, I'm not going to eat. I'm not going to be able to buy my girlfriend chocolates and we have to keep chocolates stock stocked, you know, uh, um, that's you probably the scary part. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it is scary to not, not be able to, to pay rent potentially, you know, um, I believe without the fear, I think it would just be dumb. I think it'd be dumb if I wasn't afraid, right? I yeah. I also think that it I wouldn't push as hard. That is true. I think, yeah, I think that the fear is useful mm -hmm. in that sense. It's it's useful in, in being able to be like, oh, I'm not going to be able to eat. I need to start reaching out to people. I need to start um, training more. I need to network with more people. I need to, I need to do these things. Um, mostly to get to this goal of like just shooting giant fireballs on stage in front of thousands and thousands of people on, on top of speakers that just like cover miles of sound. Yeah, uh, that sounds and great. Then, yeah, sounds awesome. I think everybody experience, everybody deserves that experience. Uh, at least once. Like, yeah. 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 
and then to also like um, be in the entertainment industry mm -hmm. and like, um, yeah, be able to express and show this, show and grow this art to its full potential. That's beautiful. I, 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 I love you for being vulnerable and just expressing yourself honestly about this question. Like, I really hope that this film can do its part uh, to share your dream of being a, a fire performer at the highest level, an artist at the highest level. Uh, the film honestly is just all about just figuring out what is the role of art in life and, you know, uh, this, this quest to feel the flow to truly and completely express ourselves to the world uh, with honesty and, and vulnerability. Because I believe like the combination of the two can lead to a lot of creativity. Like you said, the fear pushes us to keep creating. And I think yeah. that's the message of the film as far as I'm concerned. I mean, it's the situation you're in right now, right? Absolutely. Yep, yep, yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's for yeah. sure. You 100% yeah. understand, yeah. Uh -huh. You've been like pouring everything into this project that um, is a gamble. Like it's a risk, it's a scary thing to do. Nothing, nothing here is guaranteed at all, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I mean, the you are pouring your whole heart and soul into this, and and a lot of people are behind you in it too. So I believe it'll reap great rewards. I think I think you're going to be able to push this out and have your vision be seen by an unimaginable number of people. Well, I appreciate you, brother. Uh, you know that is great. Uh, Thank you for the encouragement. Obviously, definitely art is an exchange of energy. Like just this expression mm. that we exchanged today through this interview, like, you know, uh, makes me feel very giddy. You know, it makes me, uh -huh. makes me I, I woke up with a little <laughs> bit of negativity, but, you know, makes me feel like, okay, no, let's keep pushing. Uh, let's keep pushing because there's something that people see in this. Uh, talking about what people see in this, do you want to quickly share like some of your reasons from the early days till now to like keep supporting this project? And uh, yeah, if you could request the people watching to do to, to make some donation, that'd be huge. Yeah. Well, so early on, right, that mm -hmm. was two years ago now. Mm -hmm. I just hit my three year fire spinning mark. Mm -hmm. So that was early on for you early on for me mm -hmm. um in in turn for you in this movie um yep. for me in this world of fire at all and when i was asked to do it i i zero idea what kind of scale you were talking about um lots of people would be like oh i want to shoot i want to film you mm -hmm. right and mm -hmm. then um you'd get like a three minute video back Mm -hmm. and maybe they want to do a little edit of it and maybe not. Mm -hmm. um, but this was like days of shooting, different locations. Um, it was my first thing ever like that. And then I thought that, oh, we're going to be done. And then I saw <laughs> not done, not done at all. And then um, I saw like, how much dedication and focus you have in this project and, and like push and follow through. Um, you have weekly meetings that I can almost never attend. Um, you, you have like so many things that you're so like feverently pushing and like going forward with. And that in itself is just incredibly inspiring to watch you actually grow and build this. And I think that um, anyone that would like take a second to look at what's happening here would happily invest in this. I think that um, uh, the donations that you receive are gonna be well received and well earned. Um, please, please, please everybody donate to this project. It's going to be incredible, the end result, because I've seen the work that's been put into it. Thank you, John. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that, man. Uh, I will keep on flowing. We will keep on flowing. And something tells me the muse 
is making me feel that the path will emerge and we'll get to final cut. Yeah, we will. <laughs> All right, buddy. All right, I'm going to cut this and I will DM you on Instagram and just so that I can record this file, but greatly appreciate your time today, brother. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Love you, buddy. Love you too, brother. <laughs> Bye.